Hey Matt, Scott from Hey Guys. Nice to see you again. <laughs> a few hours ago. Uh, I asked you about the costume earlier. One thing I didn't ask you about was eyeliner. You're the yes, first director eyeliner, yes. to showcase the eyeliner without the magic being yes. listed. Was that an important part for you to, to show Batman, you know, when he's kind of like dressing himself, he comes to his way, but he's still Batman in, in some way? Yeah, you know, I mean, what's interesting is there was a moment in the screen test that Rob did. It wasn't something that was scripted. It wasn't something that he was supposed to do. But after we were done with the scenes, I said, you know, I brought a mirror in. I had James Chinlin bring in this mirror and we brought in this red light. And I said, I want you to come out of the darkness, look at yourself. He was dressed in the bat suit from, from here down and he didn't have the cowl on. I said, I want to see the moment of transformation. I'm just curious. And Rob started putting the makeup on his eyes and I thought, oh my God, that's amazing. We have to put that in the movie. So, I mean, you've got the rogues in this, and we've seen other movies before where they've introduced two, three, four, multiple villains. But in this, it kind of feels very organic, and yeah. it's their origins as much as it is yes. a couple of years of Batman. How, how difficult was that for you to navigate in terms of being writing the story? Well, to me, that was actually the, the conception, which is if we weren't going to do a Batman origin story, but we were going to do it in the early years, I thought, well, like in the comics, the rogues gallery characters often are creating their alter egos in response to the fact that a masked vigilante shows up in Gotham called the Batman. And so I thought, oh, well, what we could do is see all of the rogues gallery characters in their, in their origins, like Selina Kyle before she's Catwoman, and that we could go into, as we're looking for a suspect, we could go to a nightclub, a nightclub could be the Iceberg Lounge, and we could see a pre-Kingpin Oz, and that we could see uh, you know, a Riddler who is declaring himself kind of the Riddler, sort of because there's a Batman. And so all of that, it was sort of built into the conception, and then to me it was part of the exciting part of the idea, was that we could see these characters in a way that felt fresh, felt like a way you'd never seen them before. It's fun in terms of your casting, obviously you've got a, a, a fantastic cast. I wanted to ask you about, about Paul Dano. Was there a particular performance of his? I know prisoners obviously people will speak to a lot, but there's a lot of performances of his where well, he's so, so good honestly, when he played, when he played uh, in well, Love, Love and Mercy. Mercy. To me, that was it. Here's the thing. I've always been a fan of his. And it, again, weirdly, as I did with Rob and I wrote the role for Rob, I did write this role with him in mind. And I always thought, well, I don't know if he'll want to do it. And fortunately, he did. But, you know, it's actually that role in Love and Mercy that really affected me. I just think he's a brilliant actor. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!